Kevin. And so I had learned how to dress neatly. I'd become a perfect fake human. No one suspected what crouched behind my perfect imitation smile. Here I was on the side of truth, justice, and the American way. Still a monster, of course, but I cleaned up nicely afterward, dressed in red, white, and blue, 100% synthetic virtue. Seconds on the clock, name something you sit in. A chair. My own feces. Name a popular fruit. Orange. Clay Aiken. Something in your closet. Shoes. Scary monsters. Your favorite holiday. Christmas. 9-11. Something you do on the weekends. Go to church. Black guys. All right. This is crazy. I know. You know what's crazy? A grown woman peeing in her sink. That's crazy. I don't pee in my sink. It's you. Stop peeing in your sink. It's not me. I don't pee in the sink. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I know it is. What else could it be? Um, maybe uh, rinsing out your vagina in the sink? You are about to participate in a great adventure. You are about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the inner mind to KK's Lunatic Fringe. All systems go! Prepare for countdown! 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1! Let's go to adventure in the amazing year 400 billion! I want to do bad things with you. Hello everyone, it's me, Katie K. Welcome to Katie K's Lunatic Fringe. It is July 24th. 10.03 in the p.m. because I'm actually starting early for the first time in a long time. And if I sound diff different or weird tonight, there are probably two reasons. I'm proud to say that I was able to quit smoking, um, not this past Wednesday, but the previous Wednesday before that. I decided, I don't know, I, I just got a wild hair up my ass. I said, I'm going to stop uh, smoking. And uh, that, that might be why I'll be coughing less and sounding clearer and less raspy. Maybe it'll be harder for me to do the joke ones. And this is the first time that I'm ever attempting to do the show without, um... Is that music too loud in the background? I just want it to be, like, to cover the sound of the air conditioner. <laughs> there you go. I'm playing Summer Breeze by Typo Negative in the background, too. So you can't hear the motor from the uh, air conditioner going. Because I refuse to turn it off because it is fucking hot as a witch's tit in Connecticut. But anyway, like I was saying, I, I, was, um, I was somehow able to quit smoking and go on a diet and quit drinking at the same time. I, I, I think the deciding factor was when I woke up Wednesday morning, not this past Wednesday, but the previous Wednesday, I woke up on the floor of the living room, right in front of the couch, as though maybe I rolled off the couch. But I, have, um, I work out sometimes, so I have barbells in front of the couch. So if I were to fall off the couch, I would have hit the barbells, and that would have hurt, and I would have had a bruise or a mark, and I didn't. So what I'm thinking happened is I was heading towards the couch, and so drunk that I didn't make it there, and passed out on the floor in front of the couch. So I wake up, and I said, you know, something's got to stop. <laughs> Everything's got to stop. The only thing I'm still doing is weed, because I have, uh, I have a little bit of weed left, and once it runs out, I'm not going to buy any more. And to be honest, the only time I really crave cigarettes is when I smoke weed. But then it's, it's a thought that comes and goes. You know, you just got to learn to put it out of your head. I got an um, interesting email today that I wanted to share with everybody. It's, um, 
Uh, well, the headline is Help. So I open it just for the hell of it. <laughs> I'm not going to open any attachments, so it doesn't hurt to just read the text. And it says, To whom it may concern. And this is a woman, so maybe I should do like a cunty woman voice. But actually, no, she doesn't come across as cunty. She comes across as like really stupid. Everything is spelled properly. And it seems like a spam kind of thing, which I thought was kind of weird. Here, <clears throat> to whom it may concern, I am receiving prank calls, and I do not want to be interrupted during work hours or at home. This is a, <laughs> this is a business line, and I, lose it, I use it for business. Thank you for understanding and removing my number and blocking future prank calls. This has been going on for some time, and at this point, it has become harassment. I searched... i got to move my mic. It's apparently too close to my face. And then if I turn that up, maybe I can get my volume better. No? Damn it. I don't like this new headset. It doesn't even have a windscreen. It doesn't even come with one, but it needs one, as you can hear. Um, where was I? I searched your site to find something how to block my phone number from prank calls, but I was unable to find it under your search tool. So, maybe she thinks I'm like, um, in the UK these things are big, they call them wind-up lines, where you can call, it's like a pay line, and they dial one to have such and such a person make a prank call. To, it's like an automated prank call system. So maybe that's what this woman thinks it is. I don't know how she got it in her head that I was involved, because as, as everybody listening knows, I haven't done prank calls in the longest time. I have business calls coming into this line, and prank calls are coming in while I, I in the middle. Oh, that's the, that's the first spelling mistake she makes. While I in the middle of a business call, I appreciate your help and hope that you can respect my privacy. I look forward to helping me, I, look, I look forward to you helping me resolve this issue quickly and a response in return. I wonder what this is all about. I bet you maybe like every prank call site got this. Or maybe she's, uh, maybe, she, maybe it's sort of like a sending out a prayer. Or, you know, in Japan they write down wishes on slips of paper and they stuff them up each other's ass or something, I don't know. Maybe she's, uh, she's sending this out into the ether hoping, that, uh, hoping to appease the gods of prank calls. And they'll smile favorably on her and they'll stop prank calling her while she's trying to do business. And then the number is here. So if anybody wants it, so you can, you know, say hello to her, like, while she's trying to conduct business. Actually, that's what I think this is. This is probably like a lonely person wanting to get prank call. I don't know what it is. What do you guys think? Tell me in the chat room. So I do have another funny story that I could tell that happened just today. Very bizarre. I'm minding my own, own my own business, cooking my dinner. I have this like little electric indoor grill, so I was grilling up some burgers for lunch. Well, no, it was probably around five, so it was like around dinner time. And uh, the do the doorbell rings, and I say, "Hold on a moment, I'll be right there." I'm being polite. I'm I'm purposely going out of my, out of my way to be polite because I realize I'm usually very uh, unfriendly and antisocial towards people, so I've been trying to be <laughs> less so. So, um, I said, I'll be there in a minute, and even before I get there, you know, it's, uh, it's summer, it's hot, so I had the door open, I had the fans on, I had the lights th down, except for in the kitchen, so she can't see, see anything from outside, and she actually makes a snotty comment to me, like, even before I come to the door, she says, well, I can't see you, so I guess I'll have to talk at, at the dead space in front of the door. I was like, wow, you must be new to this. I'm thinking at this point she must be selling something. And I come to the door, and she says, uh, I've been introducing myself in, uh, to everybody in the neighborhood, and I hear that you guys were very friendly. And now, that, that sends off a trigger, because if you say something like you guys to a gay guy, you automatically, it's sort of akin to saying uh, you people to a black person. <laughs> you may not take it the wrong way, but it's still going to send up a red flag. And I'm like, what do you mean? Because there are no guys here, it's just me, and there hasn't been another guy here for like three years, so... I'm like, what's going on here? <laughs> I'm confused, my burgers are still on the grill, and they're, they're about done, they need to come off. And I, I, um, I try to get her to tell me what it's about, she says, well, I have this here to show you, just so you know I'm legit, and I'm not, I'm not just here casing out the place. 
And I was like, my, and it's not like she's delivering these things funny. She's saying them in a snotty way, and she's like five foot ten and like three hundred and fifty pounds. And she looks like a, a goth person who cleaned up for the day and is angry about having to do so. To go knock door to door and look for some kind of sponsorship. I know it's not for like a walking or an exercising thing because this fat pig wasn't doing much of any of that. So as I'm slowly talking to her, she's, she's doing more and more things to, to piss me off and I'm not doing anything. So I say, can you hang on a second? I have to go take my burgers off. So I come in, I go back into the kitchen, I take my burgers off, and uh, I, I, I walk out to the living room, I put them at my desk where I'm going to sit and eat, and I go back to the door and I said, look, can we do this some other time because I'm about to eat? I'm not being a dick. I literally just took the food off and now it's getting cold. <laughs> And she says, no, no, it'll just take a minute, and besides, I can't ring people's doorbells more than once. I'm like, you're never going to get anybody to help you. Am I being punked? <laughs> I've never seen somebody so rude. And uh, finally I said, look, uh, my dinner's getting cold, I'm sorry. And I, I walk away, and then she starts muttering under her breath, really, you're going to play me like that? I was like, I can't believe what just happened. I so wish I had that. That's almost like a sketch. I wish I wish I had that on tape. Hello? Hello, how are you doing? This is Ed. I'm calling for Mr. Penis. Hello? Jesus. Oh? I'm looking for Jesus. Well, well, well as we Christians say it, it's Jesus. This is Ed Rosenthal. Oh, my son. Huh? Can you put the old Hispanic lady that I spoke to before on the phone? Put put her on. What Hispanic lady? I can't remember her name, but it was an old woman before, and she sounded very Hispanic. Oh, we don't have any old woman here. You almost got the wrong number. Well, what, what do you need? Maybe I'm wrong about the old part. I don't remember her name, but I was speaking to a woman around five o'clock. Okay, okay, okay. What do you need? I can take a message. Well, um, okay, tell her that we got the stuff in, and it's going to be twenty dollars an ounce. The what? It's twenty dollars an ounce. She said she wanted twenty dollars an hour. What? No, no, no. Twenty dollars an ounce. No, I'm sorry. Did I say ounce? I meant gram. For what? Because you seem like you don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to go ahead and rip you off. So it's $20. Uh, okay, do, don't pour something on me, okay? $20. I'm talking about the FBI. You can press your call, okay? I, you, want me, you want me to call the FBI? No, no. I'm sorry, uh, I can get back uh, to $20. Are you trying to scam on me? Yeah, yeah no, 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 no. I was you, you better stop this. I was speaking to the lady before. <laughs> You better stop this. <laughs> and there you go. That was You Better Stop This, uh, track number 19 from My Last Evening Imaginary Superstar. Up for free download at my website, kdkprankcalls.com, just because I am that damn cool. on TV and I ran who? out of cigarettes. Who is it? It's Jill. I ran out of cigarettes. You know how it is. I don't know you. Can I bum a couple cigarettes from you? I'll pay I you. don't even smoke. Who are you? Yes, you do. I'll, I'll, um, I'll give you a dollar each. <laughs> Hello. That was Angry Mary Hoover. It was probably dead by now. Prank calling her at the old folks' home. <laughs> I don't know you. Well, you know Jill, my wife. 
I don't think I've ever played or listened to like all the Mary Hoover calls like together. So much easier for me to find the files on my computer when I'm not drunk. This is my favorite Mary Hoover call. It was probably one of the first ones. And it's called I Don't Smoke. Hello? Hello, Mary. Who is this? This is Ed from across the street. I'm sorry to bother you so late at night. Huh? This is Ed. Ed? Yeah, Mr. Rosenthal. I don't know you. You know my wife, Jill, too. Huh? You know my wife, Jill. No, I don't. She says that a couple times in the past when she's run out, she's given Where you a call from? and you let her bum a couple cigarettes off you. I don't smoke. Yes, you do. You gave Jill cigarettes just a couple months yeah, ago. Yeah, but I haven't sm- smoked for a couple months now. Oh, all the... St- I don't smoke at all no more. All the stores are closed and I'm dying for a cigarette. Where are you at? I'm right across the street. Where? We, we live in the apartments. What apartment? Across, across the street and down the road and over the river and through the woods. I don't know house. where you live. Well, you, you don't know me, really. You know my wife. What street? What's Jill? Yes, yes. See, you do know. I do know the, the woman named Jill. Yes. See, I told you. <clears throat> but... <coughs> you, I had a smoke for couple months now. Maybe you have an old ashtray with some butts, or I can, I can open them up and roll out the tobacco. I don't smoke anymore. I haven't smoked for goodness when. Are you, are she, are you sure about that? Yes, I'm, I don't smoke no more. Well, God I bless have, you. I wish I could quit, but I, I need quit. one. I haven't smoked. I've been to the doctor. I, I'm under the doctor's care. Where are you living? On King Street somewhere. Yeah, you know, I didn't do this on purpose, but it's sort of like a happy coincidence that I just, I just... Suddenly, I'm playing calls about quitting smoking when I, I'm proud to say that I'm 10 days without smoking cigarettes. Do I sound any different? I think I do in my own head. I, I think I do. Jill and I were arguing earlier, so I, Where? Need, I need a cigarette to call Where do you live? What's the number? Uh, number 17, and Jill is at number 18. We, we live next door to each other. I don't live on King Street. I didn't say you did. I said we did. How do you get my number? Jill gave it to me. Who? Jill. Jill? I don't know no Jill. Yes, you do. Maybe you know her middle name. Where do you... I don't even know where you live. Her her middle name is Myrtle. I don't even know her. Hmm. I'd like to know what street you live on. This is Mary... Yeah. And what's your name? What does it matter? You don't have any cigarettes anyway. I don't smoke anymore. If I did, I mean, can, I don't smoke. I haven't been smoking. You were about to say if you did have some, you wouldn't give me yes, any. Yes, but I don't have any. I don't smoke. Okay, well... I, where, I live at, where I live at, I don't smoke at all. Well, I hope you run out of cigarettes one day and you need one. I don't smoke, I told you. And you call Jill and she'll tell you tough luck on you. I don't even know Jill's number. Okay, well... I told you I don't smoke no more. I'll tell Joe she shouldn't ought to socialize with you anymore. I don't want her to. I don't smoke. Okay. I just got done telling you I don't. 
Well, your si- your sister- I, I take too much medicine. Your sister told me that you hide the cigarettes and you smoke behind your back, so... Oh, what? that's a lie. Well, that's what she said. That is a lie. So, okay, I guess I'll have to take your word for it. I'm, t- I'm going to talk to my sister. I am. Okay, well, I didn't want to start any trouble. Well, I think you are. No, it wasn't her that told me, actually. It was Jill. I don't even know who Jill is. Okay, well, maybe it's better Because I don't even know where you live. What does it matter where I live? I don't even live on King Street. I barely know where I am half the time. What? I barely know where I am half the time. They have me on so many meds. I don't smoke at all. And I would have talked to my sister. She knows I have been smoking. I have no, no cigarettes. I don't smoke no more. And the doctor knows I don't smoke. Where I live at, I don't do no smoking. They don't permit smoking in here. In some oh, places. I get it. So that's why you got to sneak them, because you can't smoke in there. I do not smoke at all. I just got done telling you. Okay, well... My oh, plates don't smell or nothing. There's best of luck to you. Damn, I'm tired of you calling here. I I've never called you before in my life. Well, whoever called here, I do not smoke, and I'm letting you know I don't smoke. Okay. And I don't even know your wife. She well, might know me, but I don't know her. Okay, well... I am If I hear any more, I'm going to have a change. But you don't have to be so angry. I, was I just... don't care. Well, don't start trouble. You're starting trouble right now. I was asking for a cigarette. I'm not... Well, I don't smoke. I'm not starting trouble. I'm just... I do want a cigarette. I don't smoke. You know how it is when you... And you're... I'm glad I don't smoke anymore. But I bet you need one now. You're so stressed out. No, I don't. I don't smoke at all. Okay. And I'm glad because I'm not... I have high blood pressure. Okay, well, I'll let because you Because I go. take a lot of medicine. I take six or seven medicine. I do not smoke. Can I ask you what you're doing tomorrow night? I'm not going to be home. Well, I feel sort of you bad. You don't even know where I live. Well, I feel sort of bad, so I was going to have Jill invite you over for dinner, maybe. No. I told you I do not smoke. I didn't ask you over for a smoke. I said, well, you come over and have dinner with us. And we'll I'm not having no dinner. Besides, I don't think I even know your wife. So I knew where you lived. I tell you, you don't even know where I live. I bet you'd know her if you saw her. She's, um... You might have my telephone number, but you don't know where I live. I do not live on King Street. Nobody ever said you did. I don't care. I do not smoke, and that's the truth. So leave me alone, will you please? So you don't want to come over for dinner? (laughs) There you go. I'm too busy over here looking through this thing. I got this thing in the mail, and I believe this is the the second time in my life I've done this. I got... um, I got to be a Nielsen family. I got like a thing in the in the mail that says, "Would you be a, would you be willing to do this?" And I said yes. And they say, "How many people live in your house?" And then they they send you however many books. You said, "I know that I'm not going to fill out four books, so I asked for two because I'm going to fill one book out and then I'm going to keep one for posterity, just because it's sort of cool to see what a Nielsen diary looks like. I guess if you're like a, a fan of TV." Then I realized that, how am I going to fi- fill this thing out? Because I, I haven't watched TV in real time in the longest time. So it says that what you do in that case is, I guess there's, um, there's a special column where you write the name of the program. Like, if you watched a movie or if you watched a program at a different time than when it was live, you're supposed to write it in there. And I'm like, what about my porn? I should really do that. I should list, like, all the porn that I watch, too, you know? <laughs> if I want to be... I- Okay, uh, 1 a.m. to 1.20 a.m., I watched uh, Fire in My Hole. There you go. That's a, that's a, a classic from uh, Budapest. I don't know. I'm just making that up. Bareback Big Meat, Part 1 and 2. I watched that between 2 and 4 in the morning. <laughs> I haven't started. I was supposed to start filling out the thing on Thursday, and I haven't done it yet. And um, I don't... Have I watched any TV since Thursday? I think I recorded Neighbors from Hell, and I haven't watched it yet, so there you go. I haven't really looked over the book enough to, like, tell you about it. It's it's just, it's like a grid. And I thought that they were using something digital, like something that you can't fake, because this is just a book. Like I was saying, I could write down, like, all the porn I was watching. I could make up shows, and if you had enough people do it, there'd be a show that's not even on TV that's number one in the ratings, just because these stupid books don't work. 
I also got to do Arbitron ratings once too, which is cool because I have like an old old Arbitron ratings book from like back in the 90s. Looks cool, and to be honest, they probably are doing it pretty much the same way. Or no, they have like a people meter that that can actually tell and record what you're listening to, right? So you can't lie about it anymore. I think. And I'm back, and I have one number coming in for uh, Elizabeth and Thomas. Elizabeth and Thomas Hole, an angry guy, answered. Thomas is about 47, though he sounded older, and he suggests that I tell people in the UK about these porn movies. Okay, Nunu, let's say I was supposed to, uh, let's say I were to make a call to somebody in the UK about them uh, downloading porn. What, what would be like the cable system that they would be using? I'm so rusty. I haven't done prank calls in so long. <laughs> Call old people in the UK and tell them this. You just want to hear me talk dirty to old people. <laughs> or maybe you just like hearing the titles. In the interest of realism, I want to use real titles. I don't want to just make them up. Especially when there's so many here that are so lovely. <laughs> Raw dick in it five. Dead country dick. <laughs> Double fuck my ass. Spit roasted cum pigs. <laughs> Your face is my dumpster. Oh, that would be great to use in a prank call. Your face is my dumpster. <laughs> okay, maybe that wasn't such a bad idea, Nunu. I I'm going to have to think on that. Nunu says, I should say I'm from BT, British Telecom. <clears throat> oh, there's no bullshit trying to call me. He says, make some med calls, that voice is believable, and people are more patient with elderly people. You're right, you're right. Oh, and Lonesome Loser is sending in numbers, yay. Um, Abdenor Rage, an Arab woman, answered at 1035. Basra Rage, uh, an Arab woman, answered at 1040. Um, Brendan Tuffer is... Um, a guy answered at 10.45. Okay, so we got a couple people here. I guess we can do some prank calls. And I have no idea what to say. <laughs> I don't know if I feel comfortable doing the porn thing, because I don't know if I want to say the things that dirty to people, because, you know, that that could frighten somebody. <laughs> All I got to do is say, uh, rape, rape my black ass. And they're like, what, what? He said he's coming over to rape me. He told me my face was his dumpster. <laughs> Uh, I should just call people up and say, your face is my... Not even talk, just like read the titles. Your face is my dumpster. Interracial threesome? Fuck. Jose wants to beat my ass, really. Kiddo deep in double trouble? Lost and tied up in the woods? <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> what are your embarrassing porns? Call and share them with us at KK's Lunatic Fringe. <clears throat> Yeah. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. Can you hear me this time? Yes. Who is this? My name is Ed Rosenthal. How are you doing, love? Okay. I'm sorry to bother you so late, but I'm just trying to find out. You live right here on 4th Street, right? Yeah. Can you hear that vuvuzela outside? What? Some asshole is blowing a vuvuzela at the top of his lungs, and I'm in the closet. That's why you can't hear it. And I, I just want to know who it is. Vuvuzela, what do you say? Stop blowing the vuvuzela, please. We're not doing it. Well, somebody is. I'm uh, alone. I'm sorry, I... but I, I am getting now right now that I'm waiting. But I don't know what you're talking about. I'm so old that sometimes I have a hard time telling where sounds are coming from. And also when I've wet myself. I don't know. We don't, we don't know what the, these sounds are. I, I have no clue. You know the Vuvuzela, you know that obnoxious... No, I have no, I do, I have no idea, and we don't use uh, well, any, any sounding things. We don't have a sound. I'm sorry to have made you angry. I didn't mean to. I'm just a, a dumb... Who man. are you? How, who are you anyway? Don't get angry with me. Now you're making me feel defensive. Okay, who are you? My name is Ed Rosenthal, and your face is my dumpster. Huh? I want you to stop... Taking garbage out of my dumpster. Taking garbage out of your dumpster? Right. 
I put it there for a reason. You have no right to take it out. Sorry, but I don't need those things. I'm sorry. Bye. You took my boozella, and now you won't stop playing it. <laughs> Keep your face out of my door. <laughs> Right, exactly. So you do understand. Hello. Hello, Basra. Mm hmm How are you doing, love? I'm fine. Who are you? My name is Ed Rosenthal. What? My name is Ed Rosenthal. Uh, I know I'm a Jew, but I'm a good one. Who are you? Ed Rose. We don't... Do, you're Basra. I'm Ed. So how are you doing, love? I don't know you. You're you're probably wondering why I'm calling. Uh, where are you calling from? I've run out of medications, and I'm calling people on the block to see if they have anything that I need. So? For example, I take Cialis, I take Oxycodone, I take something from my rheumatoid, I take Flintstones tubules, and a little Sudafed. What do you got? Give me, give me, give me. Give me what? <laughs> I, I've run out of medication. They gave me for what? I'm sorry, Basra. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. I was trying to have a joke on you, but you made me laugh. Oh, my God. You scared me. Well, there's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> okay. Tell me the truth. Where are you calling from me? Uh, Columbus. Oh, what do you need? Um, uh, I live at 3204 Pendleton Court. 3204 Pendleton Court? Right. So what do you need? <laughs> I would like to borrow some medications. <laughs> no. Medication? No. Um, Are you sick or what? Um, I need to bo borrow something I could use for lube. Like maybe like butter or olive oil, some WD-40, uh, hand lotion maybe. <laughs> You're talking, Sin. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You're still talking. Tell me the truth. So what are you wearing? What do you want? What, you mean, what do I want you to wear? Nothing at all, baby. <laughs> what do you got, my, 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 my lumber? Uh, I dialed it at random. I'm lonely. What? I'm lonely, and I wanted someone to talk to. I don't care. Well, I'm, I don't want somebody to talk to because I want to sleep. Well, at least I made you laugh. Why well, you don't? Why well, you don't? Wonder why you don't call your friends. I'm not your friends. I don't know even who you are. Well, don't get angry now. I make you laugh. At least be happy for that, right? Where are you living? Uh, I'm living in New York, so you don't New even York? Have to... Yeah. <laughs> so why <what> you... <laughs> you say, I'm living to 24 something, but I've been to court? Uh, well, I have family there. Oh, you family there? Yeah. Oh, you coming here? I come for the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Why, you want to oh. you wanna get together for some turkey sometime? Okay. Okay, now what are you calling for me? Columbus or New York? Uh, well, I gotta go because you said you were sleeping and, uh, I have other people I wanna call. Oh, okay. Okay? Alright. Good talking to you though. You too. Have a good night. <laughs> that was very strange. <laughs> I think she liked me there for about 30 seconds. <laughs> and then I blew it like I oh, he's stupid, stupid. <laughs> Just kidding. Um,. I'm going to go refill my water, but I can do that very quickly. Hello. Hello. Hello, is Catherine there, please? What's that? Is Kathy there, please? No, Kathy isn't here. You have the wrong number. Where? Is this not Mrs. Bick's house? Yes. No, no, this isn't. Oh, dear. Wait, there she is. I hear her. No, that's my wife. Tell her I'm very sorry, and I didn't mean to say the things I did. 
Well, you, uh, what's his name? You have the wrong number, sir. Please help me out here. Tell her I love her and I need her back. You have the wrong number. Cat, Kathy meant more to me than anything in my life before. And I'm you old, so that that's saying something. Well, you have the wrong number. I'm sorry. And who are you? Are, are you, you her new boyfriend? New boyfriend? Hello? Hello? Yes? Maybe I'm using old phone numbers. Is this not the big house? The what? I, it's B-I-C-H, and I don't yes. want to be rude and say bitch, so I say bick. Yes. Right. That's correct. So that is the right place. Yes. Has Catherine died? No. Has she moved? Uh, who is this place? I'm an old friend of hers. My name is Ed Rosenthal. We haven't spoken for many years, but we used to meet each other when my wife was out of town, if you know what I mean, every here and there. Did you want to talk to Catherine? Yes, of course. Just a minute. Hello. Hello, Catherine. Do you know how hard it is to get you on the phone by Gord? Who is this? My name is Ed Rosenthal. You yes. and I start back in the, we start together in a film back in the 60s called Bareback Big Meat. And I, was I think you have the wrong I was number. hoping you remember me. No, I don't. It was a three-picture deal you and I got signed to. It was, I want your every hole. Your face is my I dumpster. I have never been signed to any picture deal. And spit-roasted cum pigs. In what? Spit-roasted cum pigs. That, oh, no, you weren't in that one. That was, that, was, that was a homosexual one that I did back in my wild youth. Listen, I don't know what kind of thing this is, but I have never had anything to do with you. I've never heard of you. Well, I, maybe I have you confused. I work, uh, you I, I work with the do, Catherine would bitch. You pl please knock my number off of your index. See, her working name I was Pope's Bethulia. I don't appreciate being called at midnight. Her, her, her working name, her stage name, was Boobs McDougal, and mine was Dick Powers. Well, that's fine, but I've never heard of you. Okay, well, I guess you're not related. Do you, uh, do you have any family that ever did uh, adult films? Adult films? Well, yes, of course. What do you think with titles like Spit Roasted Cumpies? Well, I never heard of the titles, and I certainly have nothing to do with adult films. Okay, well, I'm sorry to have bothered you. Well, please don't bother me again. Oh, I promise, never again. And I really do. I'll never call her again. Has anybody noticed that I've been trying to do, like, uh, the old school uh, Ed Rosenthal voice, do it, like, a, a little slower and raspier, the way, like, an old person really would sound, because... One of the ways that people can always tell that you're old is how you move, because you get old and you move stiffer and you're not as limber or graceful anymore. And old people, that comes through in their voice. And like the old women, they, they get shaky and quivery. And old men get like deep and raspy. And if you pronounce your stuff right, you can make it sound like you're not wearing your teeth. Yeah. That's why I don't use a webcam. The last thing I need is for people to see, like, the weird faces that I make when I do these voices. Um, <clears throat> so, I have um, Marie Philip and Viola Rievi, uh, a woman answered at 11.15, and then Hugo Limp, um, an old guy answered at 11.22. So, which one do you think I'm going to call first? <laughs> the old guy with the funny name, or the woman with just a normal name? Hello. Hello, is this Hugo? Yes. Oh, how are you doing, dear Hugo? This is Mrs. Jill Rosenthal. I haven't spoken to you in decades. Oh, my Lord. How have you been, dear? Pretty good. You sound confused, so I need to tell you right away. 
I have the throat cancer. That's why I sound like I do. Okay. But how have you been, dear? Well, I'm doing pretty good. It's been a long time since you and I did movies together. Yeah. Yeah. What was your favorite? <laughs> oh, I don't know what you'd pick for the favorite. I remember one of my favorites. It was um, it was a little fetish one. It was called Tied Up and Bound in the Woods. That one I like. Okay. That one's out of print today because apparently even simulated rape is illegal in America. Uh-huh. Who knew? I thought it was a free country. <laughs> well, a lot of things change. But how have you been, dear? What have you well, done with yourself? Doing pretty good. In the intervening <laughs> years since I saw you, what have you done with yourself? <laughs> Well, the main thing, I've got older. Well, you and I both, dear. <laughs> you know, I've, uh, that was about when I re retired, I guess. I've been retired 16 years. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. I've been re retired for 20 years. 20 years. Yes, I'm 87 years young now. <laughs> How old are you, dear? You're still in your 70s. Eighty-two. Oh, my Lord, you're, you're catching yeah. up to me. Yes. Right. I'm going backwards now. I'm so old, I'm shrinking into a baby. <laughs> well, that's a good way to look at it. You just start the other way. Right, yes. Like uh, that, that movie with Brad Pitt. But anyway, the reason why I'm calling is my husband died a couple months ago. And I just got to get laid a couple more times before I die. So what do you say? <laughs> I know your old lady's gone, but we used to be pretty hot, you and I, back in the day. You remember, you remember on the set of Spit Roasted Cum Pigs? <laughs> oh, my Lord, I look like a glazed donut. Yeah. It was so hot. That one gave me a yeast infection. <coughs> that happens. Well, especially back then, bef before they knew better. Yeah. You know, back in Fortville, they didn't know about all these... Di back then, all there was was syphilis. Maybe the clap. Got a lot of them now. Maybe crabs. Got all kinds of problems they come up with now. So what do you say? You're still living in Indiana, right? <laughs> Starting a new year, right? You're still living in Indiana, right? <laughs> I'm going to buy a plane ticket. I'm going to come there. And we're going to have sex so passionate that one of us is going to die. Is so it a you're going to come to Indiana. We're going to have sex until one of us dies. Is that right? Is, isn't that the best way to go? Well, I, I wouldn't know a much better one. There you go, see? So I'll give you a call back tomorrow. My throat is starting to hurt. I need to go drain some fluid. <coughs> so I'll give you a call tomorrow. And we'll see what you can do about tapping his ass. Alrighty then. Thank you. That's actually a good deal. If I were him, and I were for real, somebody, like, makes an offer, we're going to have sex until one of us dies, I'd go for it. <laughs> because I'd probably die first, because women outlive men. <laughs> I have a couple more numbers, or at least one more number. Um, Albert Fu. Albert Fu is an Asian guy in California. <clears throat> an Asian guy in California. I don't think I'll be doing Jill again. <laughs> I mean, ever, ever since I quit smoking, I usually, like, wake up in the morning and cough up, like, these big wads of phlegm that are, like, you know, just, like, tar from the cigarettes, just, like, getting coughed out. <clears throat> not that I'm such an angel, because I do still smoke weed, but, you know, not smoking a pack of cigarettes a day makes a, a big difference when it comes to your breathing. <laughs> But I'm sitting there doing, like, the Joe voice, and then I actually re really started to cough because, like, something became dislodged, like a lump of phlegm got dislodged, and 
caught in my throat. <coughs> I'm just rattling and vibrating my throat too much when I do that voice. It, like, loosens everything. <laughs> it's like an enema for my throat. So I know some of the people that listen here are Howard Stern fans. There's an old, like, uh, Artie Lang calls in sick tape where he's, like, doing his thing. I'm not coming into work today. And you hear this sound in the background. I, this identical sound. That's the sound of a metal pot pipe being tapped out in a glass ashtray. And I'm surprised nobody ever picked up on that. I'm like, I, sh I should have called in that day and said that is obviously the sound of somebody tapping out a metal bowl in a glass ashtray. Or maybe ceramic. And I'm doing that because I have to repack my bowl here. And luckily I have a little container of um, pre-sifted and broken up weed. Because that's how I roll. I want to be able to just scoop in and not have to worry about... Oop, did I say weed again? You know, this is surprisingly easier than I thought it would be, doing a show without smoking. Or without drinking. Well, without smoking cigarettes, anyway. Artie wasn't a pot smoker, so maybe he was smoking heroin. That's what he said he did. He didn't shoot up. He, he, he snorted it. No, he smoked it. Well, what the hell did he do? I don't know. Can he even smoke heroin? What the hell do I know about heroin? Ugh. I've done a lot of drugs in my time, but there are certain drugs that I, w I would just never go ten feet near. And I've done some drugs that I would say I would never do before. Or never should have done, but did anyway. Let's see what I've done. I, I smoked weed, obviously. Although I didn't really start smoking weed until I was like 18 years old. I was already graduated from high school by the time I started smoking pot. Before that, I was kind of anti-drug. I tried cocaine once, and it didn't get me high, and I never saw any need to try it again. Never did or never would smoke something like crack or meth. Would never go near heroin or pills. Basically, I've done mostly the psych... Except for coke, I've done the psychedelics. I've done LSD, I've done mushrooms, and... Did I ever do... I don't think I ever did peyote. I know friends that did, but I never did because I heard that that makes you throw up. Yeah, so I tried acid a couple times. I tried mushrooms once. I tried coke once. Smoke pot innumerable times. Never really got into pills. Like, even when I would get painkillers because I went to the, the, you know, I had, like, something done and I was in pain, I, w I still would never take the pills. I remember once I felt like shit and I took two and, like, 20 minutes later I... I Vomited. <laughs> That's how strong they were. I once got these oxycodone. I don't remember what they were. But they, they were so strong that uh, the woman who was filling the prescription at the pharmacy looked almost jealous of it. Like, she saw it and she goes, Whoa, I hope you're not uh, driving if you're taking these. <laughs> or hop operating any heavy machinery. Like, she was, like, shocked. Bitch, bitch was jealous of my script. And, of course, they sat in the cabinet for, like, two years. And I, if I had, like, a like a, a backache or something, a headache, I'd take, like, a half of a one. How did I get on the subject? You got me talking about Artie smoking heroin. <laughs> Nunu, because Jill is back, Nunu asks if uh, Terry is dead yet. And, um... Most of the people listening remember when we called Terry. Uh, I did the prank call where he was pissing in the sink. And, um... Uh, and Jill says, Terry passed away three days before last Christmas in the hospital, aww, during a routine hernia operation, aww. If I, if I had any, I'd pour a 40 on the ground for my dead homie. And Jill says, no, you can't prank him, no, no. When I die and go to heaven and see God, the first thing I'm going to do is prank Terry. <laughs> he made an amazing recovery after his stroke last year, but the anesthetic was too much for him, I think. You can recover from a stroke, yes, you can. Can we prank the warden as the ghost of Terry? Aww. Hello? Hello, is this the Reverend Weston? Yes. I'm glad I've gotten a hold of you. I'm sorry I called so late. What? I, I have a crisis here with my grandson. He's been staying with us for summer. I was yeah. looking through some of his things, and you wouldn't believe the kind of uh, 
pornographic DVDs I found in his knapsack. Yeah. L listen, what do I do about this? I, nobody, nobody knows that I found them yet, and I don't know uh, how to bring it up to the boy. Do you know what I mean? What, what have you found? I'm sorry, I'm not understanding you. He, he's got a, a, a treasure trove of DVD pornographic films, homosexual yeah. ones, in yeah. his book bag. He's 12 years old. I don't know how he got these. Some, something's yeah. fishy. And I want to know what, sh what should I do. I know the Lord says I should hate him if he's gay. But I don't really, because he's my grandson. Oh, you, yes, he's your grandson, yes. Right. So what does the Lord have to say? Now I have to hate him. That doesn't seem right. Is Hello, are you awake? I'm sorry, I know yes, it's sir. early. What? I'm sorry, yes. I know it's early. It's five o'clock, yes. But you can understand why I was so shocked. Uh, listen to some of these here. This one, this one is called Your Face is My Dumpster, and you wouldn't believe the image on the cover. But let's just say it involves lots of penises and a face. Yes, yes. And here, another one. Spit-roasted cum pigs. Is, is this kind of thing even legal? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'll give you a call back. All right, then. You, you sound like you're either fading on me or getting turned on. And either way, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I need no, to go. I'm, I'm in the middle of that. Really. Yeah. Right. Okay. And you might want to look into a new phone. This one is really bad. Um, okay. <laughs> I could barely hear that guy myself. I know you guys could probably hear him just about as well as I did. Remember, it's five in the morning. We're calling all the way to the UK just to say hello. <laughs> just because it's funny. Hello, Tony. Found the wrong number. Who are you after? No, is this Mr. King? Yes. How are you doing, love? Who is it? I'm, I'm, my name is David. I'm calling from British Telecom because we've noticed a lot of strange activity on your line and we fear it may have been hijacked. What do you mean, strange activity? On the computer, downloading all sorts of uh, movies and uh, expensive things. Did you come into some money and you're splurging lately, maybe? Ordering lots of uh, movies online? No. Y through your, your BT count? No? Well, Not damn it, you're another one. One of our systems has been compromised and we lost a lot of customer data. Because you should see the list of things that have been coming up scrolling through. Uh, um, here, at, at one in the morning, you downloaded a movie called Spit Roasted Cum Pigs from a website called monstercock.net. No, this is not, this is not so. Are you sure? Do you have a, could you give me your number, please? Well, you can call the 800 number for BT, and uh, they may not want to talk about it yet because we haven't done the press release. We need to do the press release, and then they'll have to figure out how they're going to deal with this. But in the meantime, I'm going to put a freeze on your account, so there's no more of this uh, uh, bare fuck your... my anus uh, being downloaded by your, your... Oh, my Lord. You're sure you didn't download Monster Cock Orgy 7 from hunglads.net? Can you give me your number, please? No, you, you just call the 800 number for BT... Hello? Telecom, you know. Yeah, but this right. Is just, yeah. You know, now you're scaring me because I think maybe I've said too much already. Uh, like I said, we haven't announced this and I don't want to lose my job over this. So, do me a favor, don't call. Yet. Give it a day until they announce the press release and then call them up and say, Someone downloaded bareback big meat for £25. And it wasn't you. We, we don't have, um, we don't have this, 
Um, well, it, it's being billed to your BT line. That's why I'm saying there, there's obviously a hacking afoot. And what's your name? My name is David. I can't give you my last name unless you want to, I don't know, go out for a, a, a drink sometime. Well, anyway, like I said, I think I've said too much, and I'd I better just go. Okay, uh, you have a good night, and I never called. This was all just a dream. <laughs> because it's, it's uh, five in the morning. Wow. Hello. Good morning. How are you doing, love? Is this John? Yes. I would like to sing you a song. Uh -huh. Maybe you'd like to sing along. Pardon? It, it's an old one from Monty Python. And it goes like this. <clears throat> do what, John? Do what, John? Come again. Do what? Do where, John? Do where, John? Do where? Do where? Do where? <clears throat> do what, John? Do what, John? Do what with whom and when? Terrific, really terrific. Pardon. Come again. I'm sorry, my voice is a little scratchy this morning, because I was doing an impression of an 87-year-old lady before. That's probably where it's like a little kid, where I got a lot of practice with prank calls, because I used to be, I was uh, a manager for Domino's Pizza when I was like 18 years old. So Domino's Pizzas are getting pranked all the time. So anytime they would get like a prank call coming in, they would always put me on the line, and I would... Um, like, people would try to claim that there was a bug in their pizza. I was like, okay, um, can you describe the bug? How many legs does it have? Does it have wings? Does it have feelers? Does it have a nickname? And I would always consider it like a game. Like, if I made, if I made the, the, the person trying to prank the dominoes laugh first, I always considered it a victory. <laughs> like a game. That's how bored I would be at work sometimes. Although I think I, I maybe had a chance with that uh, that one guy I called where I asked him out for a drink and he hesitated. He's like, hmm, maybe I would like a drink. What do you look like? He's, he reminded me of uh, Ben from Big Brother. That's right, I'm, I'm a huge addict of Big Brother UK. Been watching the whole damn thing. They got a guy in there with, like, no feet and missing an eye. Hello. Hello. Is this Mrs. Poole? Who is it? Well, uh, this is Mr. Rosenthal. How are you doing? Uh, I think you've got the wrong number. No, no, I'm calling to invite you to church, love. Sure. I know you've been living in an ungodly way for quite a while, so I'm offering you a chance at salvation down at Our Lady of the Cum Dumpster. Um... Yes, no, I think you have the wrong number. I'm sorry. No, no, I don't know where I was going with that. How are you feeling today? That, okay, now I know the night's over. That was the worst prank call I've done in a long time. I'd like to think. Hello? Hello, I'm looking for James. Yes, hi. Jim, how are you doing, dear? Listen, this is Ed Rosenthal. I'm uh, Jill's husband. You know, oh? Jill. She yeah? I guess she knows you from uh, around town in New Milford, I guess. That's what she said. Wait a minute, wait, yeah? And she says that she was at the supermarket and you gave her your phone number. And I want to know what's up with that. What business would she have? Wait, 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 what are you talking about? You went to my wife and you gave her your number, and that's how I got your number. I found it in her pocket and I called, and I'm wondering why are you no, giving my wife her I, number? I, I don't I, I don't even remember. When, when did I have to do that? But what, are you drinking? No, I'm sleeping. You're a drinking man? No, I'm not. You go out drunk in public giving strange women your number? No, I don't. Well, how did she get this number then? I, I, I don't remember. It says, it says right here, it says, Jim DeLode. Yeah, but I, where, where did I, where did I talk to her? Listen, I'm going to come over there and we're going to fight. Hey, sir, please, I, I don't know who you are. We're talking about the honor of my wife. Listen, I am not, what are you talking about? Are you a married man? No, I'm not. What, are you gay? No. 
Goodbye, sir. And have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Uh, I forgot how funny that one was. I, I had my headphones on for like the beginning of that, and I'm sitting here laughing like crazy in the background. Yeah, that guy was such <laughs> that guy was such a dick. He was feisty. He was good. <clears throat> I was going to try one more call before I get out of here, just uh, for Terry, for our for our dead homie who used to pee in the sink, and you know I'm gonna look on my hard drive and see. If, do I have anything from Terry on my computer? I don't know if it's the right Terry, but we have the Terry who called me a prat. Oh, I'm just going to unplug the phone. You're a prat. I don't know if that's the same Terry. Four seven three eight two nine. Hello, Terry. How are you doing, dear? Who is it? That's very strange. You answer the phone with your number and say, instead of saying hello, this is Terry. This but who, who are you after? This is, uh, um, this is Morris. I'm after Terry. Well, you've got the wrong number. This is the second time you've rung. Make sure you get your number right next time. Is this not Wilson? Because... <coughs> oh! Hello? Hello, Terry. Why do you keep hanging up on me? I wouldn't be calling so late if it wasn't so important. Who are you? It's Morris. Morris Rosenthal. Well, you've got the wrong number. I'm, I'm, I know, no, I don't know you. I don't know you at all. Now, will you not ring this number again? This is Terry Wilson, no? Yes. So I have the right number. You haven't. Well, I don't know you. Where do you come from? I'm from uh, Westershire. Oh, I'm just going to unplug the phone. You're a prat. <laughs> I don't think that's the same thing. <laughs> So maybe I, I don't have anything, <clears throat> or actually, maybe I do, but I haven't edited it yet. Hello? Hello, how are you doing, love? Hello? Hello, wonderful. I'm so happy to have gotten a hold of you. Who's this? My heart is full of love. My heart is a flower. For you. How are you doing, love? I'm all right, thank you. Is, How are you? Is that Paulette, then? It is. Who's this? Wonderful. Who is this? My name is Ed Rosenthal. And we haven't spoken in many, many years. Mrs. Stone. I knew you as a little girl. Okay. I used to buy you a cherry ice. That was your favorite, especially when it's hot outside. Watermelon. That's what you wanted. Where do you live? You and Terry. I live in West Midlands still. Okay. Right. I'm very old. Uh huh. And. Frail. So I wanted to say goodbye. Why are you saying goodbye? Because I'm going to die soon, dear. I'm, I'm old. I'm falling apart. Oh. I almost pray for the warm kiss of death sometimes. Can I come and visit you? Why do you say that, dear? No, I said, can I come and visit you? I don't know if I can make it to the door. But I've been in bed you? for two weeks, dear. But who's looking after you? Nobody. Nobody cares about an old man. I'd be quite happy to come and no, visit no, you. No, 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 my mate Terry is coming round. He and I... What? Sorry, say that again, sorry. My, 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 my friend Terry is coming yes. around later. <clears throat> oh, dear. <coughs> I feel better already. Go on, say that again, sorry. I just wanted to say goodbye to the girl I used, the little girl I used to know. I would give a quarter to buy an Italian ice because her parents would say no. But as long as she had it while they weren't looking... She could get away with it. And that was you, and that was so sweet. 
That's a bond we've had for nigh on uh, decades now. Okay. Wonderful. So who's looking after you? My friend Terry. Oh, your friend Terry. Right. He's, he's a wonderful help around here, except, you, would you believe I caught him urinating in the sink? Oh, okay. And there were okay, dishes that's... in there. So I'm that's thinking not... maybe he, he's starting to lose his mind as well. Well, that's not very good, is it? That's not very good, is it? Well, he's, he's fun to have around. He's, he's good for a laugh. <laughs> well, I'm going to let you go. I, I've said my piece, and now I want to let you go and say thank you for being kind towards an old man. Oh, you're welcome. Hopefully someone will repay the favour for you someday. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Ha what was your name again? My name is Edgar Rosenthal. Edgar Rosenthal. Right, right. Right. Of the Midlands, Rosenthorns. Sorry? Oh, never mind. Have a good night, dear. Have a, I mean, have a good morning. Thank you very much, and you take care and look after yourself. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, then. Bye-bye. <laughs> See, you thought I was going to get her all worried. Like, I did that. Every time I do that call where people get worried that I'm on the ground and <laughs> they need some help, everybody yells at me. So that time I diffused it right away. And there you go. And that's, I guess that's the final call of the night. Um... I guess I'll hang out in the chat room for a couple of minutes before I go do something. I don't see people talking all night, but maybe that's because I don't talk in there enough, right? Well, that's part of it, but during the show, it's kind of hard to talk to people. But anyway, thank you all for listening. Uh, tune in again next week. I'll, uh, I'll try to make sure I'm here on a more regular basis, and I know I've said that before, but uh, who the hell thought I could uh, stop smoking cigarettes anyway? And the only proof I have is that I've been doing the whole show. You haven't heard me drag or light anything. Well, except for the weed. I did light the weed. Or the corn soak, I mean. Anyway, blah, thank you all for listening. <laughs> I love you all. Stay just the way you, you are, just the way we like you. Stay beautiful. Yeah, guess that's it. Well, you probably want me to get out of your hair, so uh, here's the Drano in case there's a clog. Uh, soap's right there next to the radio, and towels are on the roof. So, uh, good night.